Welcome to our lecture online. We're now ready to start talking about subframe 2 and subframe 3. Subframe 2 and 3 contain the ephemeris data. This is the very accurate data, orbital data, orbital parameters of the SV that is sending the message. Only every SV sends its own ephemeris data. Every SV sends all of the data of all SVs in a more generalized, not as accurate format, which is called the almanac. So, if you look at the five subframes, subframe one, which we've now covered in great detail, has all kinds of various parameters. Subframe two and three have the ephemeris parameters. Subframe four and five have the almanac parameters. But there's so much data there, because it, it is for the entire constellation, that we have to send 25 frames containing the five subframes before we have all of the almanac data for the entire constellation sent to us. Now it takes six seconds for each subframe to be sent, so therefore it takes 30 seconds for all five subframes. And of course, since we need 25 for all the almanac data, it takes 12 and a half minutes to get all of the almanac data of the entire con constellation of all the satellites, GPS satellites in the sky. But notice that every 30 seconds, we get ephemeris data updates. Now notice that those are usually placed in blocks roughly four hours long. In other words, the ephemeris data, even though it's sent to us every 30 seconds, and that's of course when a receiver tries to acquire a satellite, we want to get the information about that satellite as quickly as possible. So within 30 seconds of receiving information from a satellite, we have all the orbital parameters of that satellite, and therefore we can lock into the satellite readily in a relatively small amount of time. And so that is being sent every, every 30 seconds. We do, the satellites do that for about a period of four hours and then it changes to a new data set which is then the most accurate for the next four hours and so forth. And in the previous video we saw how we have to continuously uh, account for the time difference between the GPS time on the Earth and the GPS time on the satellite in order to account for the ephemeris data as accurately as possible. So we're now going to look at the contents of subframe 2 which is the first half of this subframe right here, words one through five. And you can see that the first two words of every subframe always contain the TLM and the HOW, the handover word. So that's always going to be the same for every subframe so that we can lock in to that particular set of data. In the third word, we have the IODE and the C sub RS. Now, what is the IODE? That is the issue of data ephemeris. So we want to make sure that we know which data set, which ephemeris data set that we're dealing with. And so we're going to receive that in the third word. And then we're going to compare that to the IODE of the subframe 3 and the IODC of subframe 1 to make sure that they're synced up. If they don't match, that means we just had a cutover, like at the four hour limit or if we have the data for longer, it could be the six hour limit or a 12 hour limit. But typically, after four hours, we have what we call a cutover where we get a new set of ephemeris data. And then we realize, oh, we just had a cutover. So now we have to recollect the data, which is now going to be more accurate for the next four hours. And so that's why we check for the issue of data ephemeris. So it just tells us which data set, ephemeris data set we're dealing with. Typically in a 24 hour day, we have six of those four hour sets. So the eight bit number of the IODE right here is the same as the eight LSBs of the IOB, of the 10 bit, I should put a little line here, of the 10 bit IODC of the same CI data set. So that's how we compare the two. We compare those eight bits and make sure that they're the same. Then we have what we call, uh, okay, so what is the CI data set? It's the clock ephemeris integrity data set. So that's how we know that we're dealing with the correct set. So we want to see the integrity of the data. The C sub RS is the amplitude of the sine harmonic correction term to the orbit radius. So obviously the, the, the orbit is not a, a circular orbit, it's an elliptical orbit and it's always changing. That's, that's why the distance to the center of the Earth is always going to be changing as the satellite goes around. And so we have to have a correction term for that and the CRS is what we call the amplitude of the sine harmonic correction term to that orbit radius. The delta N 
is the mean motion difference from the computed value. So that's right here, that go, that's these 16 bits in word 4. And the motion difference from the computed value, so we'll have a predicted computed value and then we'll have a measured value based on the data that we get from the satellite and so we can compare the two and adjust for that. And then finally we have the mean anomaly at reference time. Notice 8 bits are in word 4 and 24 bits are in word 5 for a total of 32 bits of that. So that's a lot of bits. The reason for that is that this particular parameter is used to uh, to recalculate and adjust for potential eccentric anomalies. In other words, the eccentricity of the orbit needs to be constantly adjusted and this is one of the parameters that goes into the adjustment term to make sure that we know exactly what the eccentricity is of that particular satellite because any slight changes or anomalies in that eccentricity will, get, will, will cause you to have the wrong uh, position for the satellite, and if you have the wrong position of the satellite, then of course you have the wrong position of your receiver on the Earth. So here are some correction terms uh, that we use in trying to figure out exactly where the satellite is at, and this data is part of the ephemeris data. Notice there's two complete subframes used for that, and these are the contents of the first five words of subframe 2, and then we'll look of course the next five words of subframe 2 and then subframe 3 to give you an idea of all the parameters that are there that are being sent to us on the satellite to tell us where exactly that satellite is, and that's considered the ephemeris data of the satellite.